Welcome to another mini video from 2dgamerguru.com. Today I'm working in Inkscape and Asprite to create a pixel art X. I'm using the design from Inkscape and turn it into pixel art, lowering the resolution, adding an outline, adding shading and adding overlays for added color and different materials. Creating game assets like these usually requires a lot of them. You don't need one X, you normally need a few and variations of them in different materials. Designing the items using vector shapes that are easy to scale, reuse and modify is a great time saver. I reuse the design of a previous X, straighten it up and start duplicating shapes, move, rotate or skew them to create a new design. I've written a few tutorials on different weapons in the past. You'll find them on my blog. The links are in the description below. Rather than draw complex shapes with the pen or the pencil tool, I like to work with shapes. Rectangles and squares can be easily transformed by rotating the rectangle and converting it to a pass. I can modify it with the node tool and easily create the curved shape of the blade. I don't have to worry about getting the curve to look right with pixels. I simply modify four nodes. Slightly more complex shapes can be simply drawn with the pen tool. Again, keeping in mind that this will be scaled down, going overboard on the detail is not necessary. This shape doesn't sit right. I change it using the node tool. Another big advantage of vectors is the ease with which you can edit pretty much any object without losing quality. Just to make it a little easy on myself, I'm gonna add the shiny edge of the blade. I duplicate the blade, give it a white color, duplicate it again, offset it, cut it with the path difference and give it a gradient to finish off the blade. A gradient to the decor element at the top and the design is pretty much done. I duplicate the shapes, mirror them, place them on the other side and place them below all the other elements. Select all shapes, rotate them 45 degrees without losing quality and export to PNG. Importing the PNG into a pixel program feels massive. So the first thing is to reduce the sprite size. I scale the sketch down to 64 by 64 pixels. Load a palette that I created prior. It's 16 colors of gray and brown and set the color mode to indexed. That way I won't be adding unnecessary colors and keep the design a little cleaner and more consistent. After adding the outline, I start with the shading. To speed it up a bit, I use the line tool. Instead of putting every single pixel down, I just draw the lines. The gradients in the vector shapes gave me a rough idea. I'm now adding more contrast, highlights and shine on the blades. Try to balance highlights and shadows. Don't just add shadows or only highlights. Use both of them to define the shape, depths, as well as the nature of the material. In this case, it is a shiny metal, so I want really strong highlights. And I add a second light source on the right side as a rim light to show the reflective nature. Let's add some detail, make this axe a little bit more ornate. I don't like the look of this, so undo is your best friend. This looks a little bit better, some design on the blade. I add a lighter line next to the design to give it damps and create an engraved look. With the shading done, it's time to have some fun. I add a layer on top, 
set the layer to overlay and lower the opacity to add color to the rather bland looking metal I have at the moment. I choose a light blue for the left side and an orange for the right side. Adding color to the edges brings more life to the design. The layer blend mode overlay mixes the color nicely with the colors below. The orange of the overlay layer adds nice vibrant colors to the brown of the handle. Even though the tool is displaying the blend nicely, it's still working in indexed color mode. Remember to change to RGB color mode before exporting the asset. To create variations of the material, add another layer, fill it with a color, in this case an orange to get a bronze or gold color. Change the layer blend mode and the opacity of this layer to get the desired effect. It can be a little fiddly to find the right color, opacity and blend mode and sometimes it's the surprising results that work. A bright orange with a reduced opacity gives me the bronze look I was after, while a purple fill gives it a completely different look. As with any design task, experiment and have fun. In this mini video I used basic shapes, the node tool, gradients in Inkscape and scaled edit outlines, did the shading and worked with blend modes on the pixel side. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and learned something new. If you did, please subscribe to my channel, leave a like, leave a comment and I will see you again soon.